happy Friday. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Aziza, aka Gourmet Pens. Today's video is unusual, and the reason it's unusual is I have to be kind of cryptic about it because I don't want Mont Blanc to come after me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And also, this is my first time doing a video on a Jin Hao. So, today we are doing a video on the Jin Hao X159. And online it goes by the name X159, like black acrylic fountain pen. So that is what I have here. I purchased this with my own pennies. So I thought, you know, this way it's, it's like extra fascinating for me and for you. I do my best to be unbiased, but typically if I'm borrowing a pen from a friend or a company, I'm picking the pen that I'm excited about. So like, obviously I'm more interested in it. But this I bought for research. So the research will show interesting things <laughs> about the pen. So let's look at the pen. And I have a couple notes that I want to make sure I, I hit about the pen. So yeah, let's do that. Let me open this up so you can see the pen in a little more ease against the background. It is an X159, the original Jin Hao 159 was a metal pen, very heavy. It was supposed to be an alternative to the Mont Blanc 149, like if you wanted to try out like a big, a girthy pen with a larger nib. This one is a bit more of a refined version of it. Unfortunately, I don't have the original 159 to show you, but it looked very similar. It just felt quite different. So this one is all acrylic and I will talk about the measurements and everything. But first of all, let's just look at it. It's interesting in that it's a very familiar appearance. It is a large, like a girthy cigar shaped pen. This particular one has silver colored trim. There's nothing on the finial. The clip is familiar. Uh, there's nothing unusual about it. The center band is engraved with Jin Hao X159. It has a whopper of a nib. It's pretty large. And it is a cartridge converter filler with an O-ring on the section for a nice, smooth, tight closure. Interesting. Now, let me grab my pen case so we can talk about the nib sizes. Okay, so, sorry, not the nib sizes, the pen size. So what I'm gonna do is this. What we have here is a Mont Blanc 146, a Mont Blanc 149, a Jin X159, a Pilot Metropolitan, a Lamy Safari, the Jin Hao X750, Twisby 580, Platinum Preppy, and a Coveco Sport. So you can certainly see it's a larger pen, it's a girthier pen, and it bears a resemblance to the 149. And I think that's what makes this pen extra interesting. I am quite fascinated, so I actually ended up buying four of them. And here's why. They're so affordable that I got four. So one of them goes for about $15. Three of them is like 35. So <laughs> it's kind of a no brainer. And truly this was all for science. I, I wanted to check them out and I was really excited to do this video because I do videos on a lot of hard to get things because they are like handmade nibs or custom pens. And I really want to do this because this is attainable. It's, it's relatively affordable. And I have to say, long story short, it's a pretty darn good pen. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way because I don't want to knock it over. So let's look at it. Let's, let's look at the pen in a little more detail. Okay, so I have showed you the parts of the pen in hand it's remarkably comfortable. It's a little on the thick side, so if you have smaller hands, you might find that the spread of your grip is a little uncomfortable. But in terms of weight and balance, 
it's really good. And it does post quite snugly. It makes it a little long, but I mean, it's not too heavy. It's still quite well balanced. I'm still like, I'm still marveling over this pen a bit because it's, it's really well done. It's a really nice pen. I have, as like you've seen, I have the Jinhao X750. So I have a whole bunch of Jinhaos from the metal era. And this one just feels better for me. It's just more comfortable for me. I don't mind the feeling of the acrylic. Let's write a little bit because this is the other part of this pen that is fairly remarkable. This nib is so nice. When I first tried it, I was really not expecting much. I'm thoroughly impressed. So this is the Jinhao X159. The black acrylic with the silver colored trim is a bit of an upcharge to compared to the gold one. This is the gold colored trim by like two dollars or something. Totally worth it. So we have Jinhao X159. This is the steel fine. It absolutely writes like a western fine, like nice and generous. And the ink is Sailor Do You. So if we look at the nib, it is a round point. Truly, this thing performs better than quite a few expensive pens I've ever owned. The nib is perfectly tuned. I have not had skips or hard starts. It is medium wetness, so it's like just the right amount of ink flow. It is steel. You can put pressure and get a wetter, like medium broad. Seriously, this thing is remarkable. It has a plastic feed. I did bend the feed and I just bent it back into place because I didn't care. So the reason I bent the feed was because apparently you can put a Mont Blanc 149 nib on this. I cannot confirm this because I have not done it. And I can't show it because I don't know if it's true. But should you wish to try, you absolutely could. And it might be worth an experiment because it's not that expensive. It's quite fairly priced. It is lovely. It has a touch of feedback. It's so easy to write with. It is... Like, I do have... Obviously, I have a 149. I don't have issues with it. I have more of, like, flourishing nibs on my 149. So I have an O3B and um, the Calligraphy Flex. But I don't use them for daily writing. I use them for flourishing, um, fancy type things. And based on the size of this, I could easily use a regular, like a fine or a medium for regular writing because it's, it's really comfy. I'm truly, I, I was really excited to do this video because I just really wanted to share this with you. So if we look at the, I'm going to turn the page so you can have a fresh page. If we look at the two pens, um, they look very similar. Obviously, they're not the same pen. The 149 is precious resin. Now, as someone who owns a couple Mont Blancs, I feel totally comfortable laughing at this. It is plastic. Uh, but... What is what is a little different is the resin of the 149 has a deep like red glow in light and the black acrylic of the Jin Hao doesn't have that. It's just a solid black, which is totally fine. But that is one way they stand. They're, they're a little different. Another thing is I do find the acrylic of the Jin Hao scratches very easily. 
uh, like even when I was doing measurements, it, it got scratched up. When I was just putting it into a pen case, it just got a little scuff here and there. Not a deal breaker, but something to be aware of. And certainly this will happen to my 149 as well, but this is in much better shape and I've had it for four years now. And it's been inked since I got it and it has fewer marks on it than the Jin Hao, which I've only had for like two months or a month. So that's one thing to note. I'm going to put the measurements in of both of these pens. Typically, I don't do measurements because I hate measuring pens and I don't care. Um, because to me, it's all relative anyway. But they're not the exact same size and their parts are not interchangeable in that the caps can't be swapped, the barrels can't be swapped. Uh, the 149 is a piston filler. The Jin Hao is a cartridge converter, which in many cases is preferable. So let's put the measurements in. Long story short, they are almost the same size, but they are not. Uh, the 149 weighs 32 grams. The X159 is like 26 grams. So they're, it's an insignificant difference. What I will say, I just summarized a few pros and a few cons. So let's, let's go back here. Let's talk. Okay, so first we have the measurements, which I will have shared or will share right now. something I haven't decided yet so measurements okay um let's talk about a few pros about this thing because it's wild relatively inexpensive for a larger pen with a large nib okay that is one thing um it has a very classic look like it's really hard to argue with with these so these are the four options there that I was able to get there's the black with rhodium trim or silver trim. And these three colors all have gold trim. So you have like a navy, a black, and a Bordeaux. Um, they write incredibly well. Honestly, really lovely writers. And they're easy to clean and maintain. They are not pens that you need to stress about having because, I mean, sure, it would suck if you lost it, but it wouldn't be the pain of losing a 149 which is like 800 bucks or more uh, a great writer for the price a great gift idea and and truly a great canvas for urushi and makie or painting like if you just want to have fun with your pen it's a great option it is an alternative to a large pen it's just really good it's 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 a lot of pros my my cons for it uh, scratches really easily, so I expect that it'll look a little more beat up faster than a 149 would, but this is not really necessarily a comparison, but we all know it's in our heads. Uh, considering the price, I don't care. Um, there's a limited nib selection, so it's only extra fine and fine, but you know, should you be one of those people who want to swap nibs, you can increase your nib selection. And it's a pretty plain selection of colors. But that totally works, and the reason for that is if you've ever bought a regular Meisterstück, for example, these are your color options. And this one's not even available anymore, so you get this. So, sure, it's burgundy, navy, and black, but the alternative is burgundy and black, and not even burgundy, so it's just black. Limited color selection, who cares? The appeal of this pen is that it writes really well, it's super comfy, weirdly enough, very affordable, and it writes really well, really, really well. So reliable. So, so reliable. So it is a round point, and I really enjoy it. I'm basically singing its praises because it's really awesome. I'm pretty happy with it. And I wanted to share it with you because I think it's really cool. And I suspect it'll be controversial. There might be some complaints about uh, the fact that it looks a lot like another pen we know. But let's be real. This is not an unusual appearance. There are other pens that look like this too. It just so happens that 149, 159, you know, they just happen to be really comparable. And that's that. 
So let's do some side writing because that's always fun. And then we will come back and do a little summary. anything? I don't feel like I did. There are worse ways to spend $15. And honestly, if Jin Hao would make this in the colors of like pen BBS, they would rock the pen world. So hello, Jin Hao, please listen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. And I, I, I really am thoroughly pleased with this pen. So if you want to see behind the scenes content, you should absolutely check me out on Instagram. I am Gourmet Pens, and I thank you kindly for watching. I appreciate you, and I love your comments, thoughts, feedback, everything. It's much appreciated, really. So thank you. I will put links for you. I will put measurements, and I will put places where you can buy this, should you wish. No commission, just for fun. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a lovely day. XOXO Gourmet Pens. Just look at that. What a lovely writer. Oh, thrilling. So, there we go. I hope you learned something, and I hope you're looking forward to trying out a new pen. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please chime in below, and otherwise, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.